the Wisconsin Congressman Mike Gallagher. Um, Mike, great to see you. Thank you for joining us tonight. I really appreciate your perspective on all this. I mean, there's so much going on. Um, we've just had this news now officially that Nancy Pelosi is going to push for the 25th Amendment and impeachment articles will be brought, an article will be brought if that doesn't happen. Your thoughts on everything that's happened this week? Um, over to you. Well, thanks for having me. I, I honestly never thought that I would be sitting in my office in the Capitol, barricading the doors, having a discussion with my staff about, you know, whether we could use our flagpoles as defensive weapons if indeed, uh, you know, the violence came right to our doorstep. So it was just, uh, it was a horrifying week. Um, and it's one that I think will uh, be long remembered and not for good reasons. Um, as for what the speaker intends to do, I haven't seen the articles of impeachment. Uh, my gut tells me that is not the right approach uh, right now. I think a lot of people, myself included, are, are weighing two things that point in different directions right now, if I can just be brutally honest with you. One is a real yeah. anger over what happened and um, a desire to hold people accountable, uh, even the president himself, uh, for whatever role he played, against the, I think, need to just hold the country together uh, by, which is hanging yeah. by a thread right now, and avoid further bloodshed and violence uh, leading up to January 20th, and just try and land this plane on a peaceful transition of power. And I'd be lying to you, Steve, if I said I figured out the right way to balance those two things, but I think a rushed impeachment right now is, is not the best approach, particularly when we're just still recovering. We're still trying to ascertain all the facts, and I feel like you know, last night was the first night I slept in a full week. Right. I know. I mean, I really feel for you right there. Um, and, you know, even being able to process it once you, you know, going, going through that experience um, so quickly. A um, couple of points I just want to pick. First of all, um, the tech response. Don't you think that, as I was saying earlier, that, that also contributes to making things worse, just as you were saying, because it's now gone from, OK, taking down the president's um, account to it, what it feels like to many conservatives, an assault on them as a group from these tech oligarchs in Silicon Valley. You know, I do think it's going to be counterproductive over the long term, because in some ways, don't you think that the fundamental problem we had in the two months after the election is it was really impossible to have a conversation about what did and didn't happen in the election because there was no common source of information that we all trusted, right? And in an environment yeah. where nobody trusts the legacy media, People were willing to trust grainy, bogus videos tweeted by Lynn Wood uh, because they were just struggling uh, for something that confirmed their ideological prior. And so I think anything that further fractures us into separate realities is a bad idea. Uh, I think this will be counterproductive. But I just want to be clear, Steve, uh, in no way do I think that the inevitable overreaction of the left uh, should excuse us from taking a hard look at what happened on January 6th and condemning mm -hmm. the violence uh, yes. and everybody associated with it. Because while I empathize with those conservatives who feel like they're being silenced, quite frankly, I have no empathy for the human beings that bludgeon police officers to death. I have no empathy for those who violently stormed the Capitol and created uh, chaos. I just simply can't abide by that. That is insurrectionist behavior. Totally, totally with you on that. Um, let's just take one part of, of what you were just talking about, which is how to have a reasonable conversation, a policy-based conversation, on those very real concerns around the election, which, you know, set, set this whole thing in train. What's your thought on that? Well, as I proposed in Wisconsin, uh, I think the only way going forward, uh, because it is, as you pointed out in your, your opening monologue, there are a, a significant number of Republicans who uh, believe there were significant problems with the election. I think the only option going forward is for every state, my own included, to do a version of what Florida did after the 2000 election. The fact is there are processes in Wisconsin that don't make sense. There are things we can learn from other states, how to keep up-to-date voter rolls. And I think there was a massive expansion of absentee balloting. A lot of it was well-intentioned states trying to figure out how to conduct an election in the midst of a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic. But I do think we have to go state by state and just clean up the processes, if for no other reason than to give people confidence in the integrity yeah. of our election. Otherwise, we're going to go further down this road of everyone distrusting the institutions and potentially further down the road of political violence. And that is not the direction we need to go. We have to be sensitive to people's concerns while also not lying to people and being willing to tell them hard truths. 
totally agree. I just really... That's right. That's what we've been trying to do here ever since the election, which is to distinguish between the, 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 the legitimate, reasonable um, issues that require reform and focus on them in a constructive, policy-based way. Um, Mike, so much more to talk about. We're out of time, but I really, really appreciate you joining us tonight. Um, hopefully check back in with you in a few weeks as we see, um, see where this is all going. Thanks again.